Sure, so my research is in geometry, but it's in a specific type of geometry that's called algebraic geometry. So the problems start with simple counting problems of if you have lines in the plane, how many times do they intersect? But then if you, that one's easy, we can kind of all see, okay, well, they can intersect once, or maybe they're parallel and they didn't intersect at all. Um, or maybe they have the same line and they intersect everywhere. And then you, you ask harder questions. So what if I threw four lines up into space? And you can ask, okay, for those four lines, how many other lines intersect all four of them? And that's a bit harder to visualize. Um, and then we, we create these algebraic structures to help us answer the question in a really uniform way um, so that we can answer things like that without having to look up in space and see those lines. You can actually just work out the algebra. And that's mostly what I'm working on is these questions of, of planes in space and intersections and how and when do they intersect. So when I, um, I was an undergraduate philosophy major and then I decided to go to graduate school for math because writing papers takes way too long. Um, and math homework was so much faster. So I went to graduate school and I didn't know what I wanted to study and I decided um, instead of picking an area, I would pick an advisor. And so I found someone um, who was teaching the algebra course that I was taking and he was really great to talk to. I loved the homework he gave and so I did a reading course with him and then it turns out he, he studied combinatorics, which is sort of the general area that I do, and um, with algebraic geometry and representation theory coming into play, which was gave me tons of problems to work on and areas to think about. So that's that's how I got into the area. I just I wanted to work with him, and that's what he did. And so it was a good place to go because I had a great person teaching me from the beginning. So if you want to start in this field, it's sort of a, it's a nice one because there's not a lot of background that you need. Um, certainly you need a strong foundation just in, in rigorous mathematics. Um, having taking, you know, multivariable calculus can kind of get you started, but then it's a good idea to take abstract algebra, which we offer at 410 here, and possibly analysis too, 425, because those introduce you to doing rigorous mathematics and proofs and concepts like that. And they also introduce the basic idea of abstracting things to a higher level to answer simple questions. Like in 410, really what we're trying to teach you how to do is figure out if there's a formula like for solving a, a cubic equation, because you know the quadratic formula, but is there one for a cubic? And the whole machinery of abstract algebra is actually to solve those concrete problems. And it shows you how you make things more complicated to find answers to simple questions. And that's a, good, that's a good place to get started. Usually what happens is um, I take my notebook and then um, I draw a bunch of pictures. And um, I'm trying to solve things using, using diagrams like this. And I play around with them and see what patterns pop up um, and what what sort of connections I can make and if I see the same thing happening over again I try to write down what it is I see and then I try to ask myself is it true always or is this just sort of an accident that it's happening and that's sort of what you do is I have colored pens I have lots of graph paper and I, I put numbers in boxes and I draw lines and I look for for patterns to come up and then once you discover something then you you delve into okay why is it happening and then the real math starts coming out okay now I need to prove something that's happening but it all starts with actually just playing a puzzle and looking for patterns. Um, so I, I have an undergraduate working with me right now who's fantastic and I give him problems where I say okay well here are some objects and I want you to figure out how many there are and here are some rules for what you can do and I want you to find structure there and he does and he goes and he works out tons of examples and he looks for patterns and he comes back to me and he's like oh I noticed this and that I'm like great okay let's figure out is this true and why? Sorry, that rings all the time. Um, it, let's figure out if this is true and, and why is it true and how generally is it true? Um, and that's the sort of thing. And then eventually, you know, it gets hard to do examples by hand. So once you've discovered enough and you really want to test your conjectures, then you have to write some code and program it and get the computer to check your, your examples for you. So in terms of, of leadership and advancement, the, the goal when you're, it's, it's not like working in a lab per se. So the students that I work with, um, my graduate students or my undergraduates, it's really a one-on-one -on -one working with me. And I try to get them talking to one another when their projects overlap, because it's nice to have you know, someone else you can bounce ideas off of. 
Um, but it's really a, a working independently thing. Um, and the hope is that the graduate student or the undergraduate students who, who thrive and excel and they really show aptitude for this, that they're going to get hooked on it and they're going to go to graduate school in math where they're going to you know, advance on in their career and maybe pursue academics or maybe go off to something else but with that really strong analytical background to support them. I think all of it's fun. Um, I, I like that it's really just games. Like it comes down to it, it's really just solving puzzles. I have a lot of puzzles in my office. I really like playing games and solving puzzles. And to me, the area that I work in is, is really just solving puzzles. And that's sort of what I get to do all day is play games. It's kind of funny that people pay me for this, but, um, but they do and it's important research. And it, you, know, it has, you can always think that, yeah, I'm doing this and it's super fun and it's a game, but it has ramifications in other areas, in other areas of math and in other sciences, especially physics. Um, it actually has real world applications and implications, but at the heart of it on my day to day basis, I'm just playing games. Um, so uh, there are two that come to mind that the one that's a, a little less real world, but at least it's not in math is um, in physics and string theory. So one of the central elements of string theory is understanding these intersection numbers and being able to enumerate them. And that, that's actually the cornerstone of, of string theory in physics, which has a lot of ramifications in terms of how we understand the universe and how things work. Um, on a different level, um, these numbers are hard to compute. And whenever something's hard to compute, then that means you can build a cryptography system out of it. It's sort of like factoring prime number, factoring numbers, that's hard. That's why we can build RSA encryption. But you know, RSA has its weaknesses and its limitations, so we're always on the lookout for new cryptography systems that are based on different things that we could do. And this is one of them. And these numbers that we're trying to compute are notoriously hard. Um, and that gives us a way to say, okay, well, now we can build a crypto system out of it. And then there are applications as well to um, computer science and complexity theory in terms of you know, how hard is a problem. And there's this famous problem of P versus NP. And just the traveling salesman problem and can you ever find a good way to solve it and this these sort of answers that we're getting here are helping us understand that better all right so we have um in the math part we have a website that the url i don't recall right now um but we have a website that's focused on undergraduate opportunities and you can look for things like that. It'll point you to different programs and research, research experiences across the country or locally here at USC. But also, um, we have faculty who are willing to mentor students and who are open to having undergraduates, strong undergraduates, join the research group in different capacities. So it's a good idea to go to that webpage and see what options are out there for you and go with your interests. Always go with your interests because if you're not interested in it and passionate about it, it's, you know, it takes the fun out of it, and that's half of why we do it. The way that I met Sammy was um, when I first started studying math, uh, I wanted to see what research opportunities I had at USC. And so I uh, spoke to quite a few professors um, before finally uh, one professor actually told me that he had emailed Sammy and that she would want to meet. Um, so it was actually sort of second degree rather than like uh, most of the people that I'd met had been like directly walking into the office. Um, and our project, well, my, the first thing that I started working on her with was a uh, coding assignment. Uh, so she was interested in uh, making a coding library for uh, simple combinatorial formulas. And um, so she had me help her with that for a while. Um, and one of the uh, projects that came up was uh, counting objects of a certain structure called uh, Young Tableau. And while I was trying to program these, a deeper question came up that uh, turned out to be uh, sort of an open problem. And when I came to her office to ask about this, she told me that um, it wasn't really solved in a satisfactory way. Uh, and so the project kind of shifted from a coding assignment into uh, trying to figure out a better way to count those objects like in a theoretical sense. Um, so I worked on that with her for a while. And um, 
I haven't been working on that with her the entire time. Um, there has we have changed projects, uh, but uh, all in all, it's been a really enjoyable experience, um, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. And I've definitely learned a huge amount of mathematics.